Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Nebula Fox Toy Reviews. No fursuit um, introduction today, just had a nosebleed and don't want to risk having another one in fursuit, so there we go. But anyway, today we are going to be looking at these Godzilla vs Kong figures. We have Antarctic Kong with an Osprey and Supercharged Godzilla with a fighter jet. We're going to look at Kong first because I'm more excited about Godzilla. So, this is Antarctic Kong, which is basically just a Kong figure we've already had, and I have yet to review, but got some like white paint just splattered over it to make it look like he's covered in snow. So, on the front of the packaging, we have a nice uh, picture of Godzilla and Kong fighting in the background with the logo for the film. And here we've got a little bit of a destroyed cityscape, Monsterverse logo, Antarctic Kong with Osprey, um, a battle damage reveal, and then just don't eat anything. We've got the logos, we've got Toho, who's obviously the original uh, owners of Godzilla, we've got Legendary, who do this lot, and then we've got Playmates Toys, which is the company. On that side, just Monsterverse and Antarctic Kong. On this side, Godzilla vs Kong. On this side, well, she said on the back we have. Oh God! My uh, my tripod decided to just collapse. Is my phone really that heavy for it? Right, anyway, let's try that again. On the back we have a couple of bios. Oh my God! This 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 friggin' tripod turning into a right piece of shit. Sorry. So anyway, we have uh, this mini bio and also that mini bio. I think that's like the generic bio that's on all the figures. And this is the specific bio for the Antarctic Kong figure. And we've got a little picture of the figure and all the others in the set. I have the Warbat still to review. I have Battle Mecha Godzilla still to review. Still got the Skull Crawler. We're reviewing Supercharged Godzilla today. I've got Hong Kong Battle Godzilla, but I'm going to wait to review him till I can try and get Hong Kong Battle Kong. And Godzilla with the radio tower is impossible to find at the moment. So, yeah, so I've pretty much got all of these apart from those two. He's going to be the easiest one for me to find, I think. So. Let's get this Kong out of his box, shall we? And try not to knock my phone over again. Right, so let's get his arms up, because I need to try and cut this massive thing that's around his um, waist. But before I do that, let's get that battle damage piece out. That has just been taped in, I think. All of this has just been taped in. Right, so that's the Osprey, I think. Yeah. There's a lot of sellotape on this packaging. Here is the damage piece. I'm trying to get it out. There we go. Now let's try and cut this without damaging the figure. There we go. He is free. Did I actually damage him? No, I did not. So we'll put the box down there. And here is Kong. Now, we already have this figure, as I've said. But... Mm, ouch. <laughs> ouch. Uh, but I haven't reviewed him yet. I will do eventually. I just need to get round to it. If I straighten his legs out, he can stand perfectly fine. Now, if I try and angle this forward a little bit, is it going to fall over again? Probably. I shall have to keep an eye on it. But anyway, so here is Kong. He has a, you know, these figures are really nice. Yeah, you know, I do honestly like them. 
So this is his monkey face. He's not very happy. But he's got some really nice paint work on the eyes, which you can't really see. You can see it on that one. And his teeth are done right nicely. He's got some scratch marks from Godzilla uh, painted on him. And then it's just a generally nice figure. Not much paintwork on him. He is moulded in this, um, in that light brown plastic. He's just got some darker paint here on his uh, monkey, <laughs> his monkey boobs. Um, and then he's just got the the white splashes on him to make him look like he's uh, been in the snow. And also the that's painted on as well. His scratch marks. And then this bit is painted as well. So if we get the battle damage piece, which is here, this will fit nicely into the wound. And, um, eh. well, it will if it would behave. I have to put that bit in first. There we go. There. So that is the uh, the battle damage piece in place, and then you just you know peel it off if you want him to be you know want him to be attacked. So monkey butt for articulation, the head can swivel side to side. There's no up and down movement, but he can just look side to side. He can T pose. In fact, he can go uh, more than a T-pose. His arms can do a full 360. He has about 90 degrees in the elbow. And then he can go, he can slightly overextend his elbow the other way. His hands are on uh, swivels. So you can move his wrist around on both hands. His legs can go forward that far backward uh, that far they can swivel at the hip and for knee it can go back that far so we've got about 90 degrees of knee bend going that way and he can hyper extend the other way and that looks painful nothing on the feet but you can't really complain. These are basic figures. And if you make him go not need, he can do the splits. So yeah, that is Kong. We'll take a quick look at his little osprey. As I like to, I used to call these things heliplanes when I was little. Because in this mode they're like a helicopter. And then they rotate the blades forward and then they're a plane. So when I was a kid, I used to call them heliplanes. So now they are tilt rotors. So yeah, not much detail going on with this thing. Also, zero paint. <laughs> but, you know, these are little tiny accessories that are going to get lost immediately. So they pro that's probably why they didn't bother painting them. Now then, Kong should be able to hold this. To wield it as a weapon against Godzilla. There we go. There he is. He can hold the Osprey. And that's that. That was uh, that was the Antarctic Kong. Can't really say anything else about him. So I won't. And instead we shall move on to Godzilla. So put Kong to the side. And we shall move on to supercharged Godzilla. So... Exactly the same packaging. We've got Godzilla and Kong at the top. We've got all that at the bottom. Apart from this time, it says blockbuster movie, Godzilla vs. Kong. So this one must have come out more in time with the film. Whereas this, this Kong would have come out a bit later. So this seems to have come out more in time with the film. Battle damage, logos. Yay. We have on here, we have the Kong with fighter jet. Um, this time, and I have that one to review. This is a regular Mecha Godzilla now. 
with a heave. So if I bring the other box back, we can see this Mecha Godzilla is a lighter grey, but the one on this box, Battle Mecha Godzilla, is a much darker grey. So I think I'm going to have to try and find this Mecha Godzilla as well, the light grey one, because I have that dark grey one. So yeah. So yeah, nothing much different with the box. So let's get Godzilla out. Now his tail is separate in the box, so we have to plug that on, as you do with like nearly every Godzilla toy. There we go, so that's him free. Let's get his accessories out, which is his battle damage piece. But, oh God, once again, it is taped in. I've used too much tape on these packages. They honestly have. They've used way too much sellotape. Because when I'm unboxing a figure, I don't want to fight with sellotape. The only sellotape I should fight on bo toy boxes is those that hold the flaps in. It's the only tape that should be on boxes. This tape is really not needed. There we go. Let's get the sellotape off the off that. And there we go. A slightly more destroyed box for this figure. There we go. Put that box there. So here is Godzilla. Let's plug the tail on. Ouch, he's very spiky. So it's on a ball joint, so you just gotta plug it in. Oh god. This does not want to go. No feeling this does not want to go. And he is just spiky. Ugh. He is way too spiky. Doesn't even give you advice to uh, warm him up first. So let's try this again. So I really can't get a grip on Godzilla. Hmm. I'm going to be right back because I'm going to dip him in some hot water and see if that helps. Okay, I'm back. I uh, dipped the tail in some hot water and I was able to put the tail on. So yeah, for any figure, especially Godzilla, because his tails are always seem to be on ball joints no matter which company you buy them from. If you ever have trouble sticking a tail that's on a ball joint onto the actual ball joint, Stick the tail in some hot water, it'll soften the plastic up and you should easily be able to then put it back on. And this is a good fit, it is not wanting to come back off despite being, you know, still being a flexible plastic. So, here is supercharged Godzilla. And he is a pretty cool figure. Although, thanks to him being overbalanced, you're not really going to be able to, oh no, you can. All right, never mind. Ignore me. So here he is. He's looking straight up into the sky because he's about to, you roaring, you roaring at the sky. This is a pretty cool figure. This is my first experience with a Godzilla from the, of this size from the Godzilla vs Kong film. Obviously I've always had an experience with a Kong, but first experience with a Godzilla. Because the Godzilla figures, you know, the Godzilla half of Godzilla vs Kong it's actually quite hard to find, and it's it's taken me this long to find one. So, ugh, been a pain in the ass. So here is Godzilla's tiny little head. Look at his cute little derpy head. He's kind of cute. I like him. 
Um, his back plates are made of a very, very nice translucent uh, blue plastic. That is very, very nice. I do like these spikes. They are made of a slightly flexible material, so they don't hurt that much when you're holding him. But if you are you know, gripping him to try and put the tail on, then they do kind of hurt. The ones on his head are unfortunately not painted, but oh well. The ones going down the rest of his back and into his tail, to about halfway down his tail, there is like a dry brush of the light blue to make this continue. And then the tip of his tail is just black. There's no paint there. Uh, there's obviously the paint on the eyes and his teeth and inside the mouth are painted. That pinky colour. But apart from that, there's no paint on him. Oh, so there's the battle damage wound. But, you know, other than that, there isn't really much paint on him. And to be fair, it's Godzilla. It doesn't really need any paint. Oh, pardon me. For articulation, the mouth can open and close. The tail, as you know, is on a ball joint. Which is a bit of a pointless ball joint because it means you're posing the tail at the midsection, but the rest of it is all one. The arms can do... Can they do a full 360? They can. The arms can do a full 360. Both of them. And the legs can go forward uh, that far and back that far. They cannot do full 360s. Uh, it looks like there might be... A, there is a break in the foot that looks like there might be a swivel joint there, but they don't want to move. Same with the head or the neck, should I say. There is a break that looks like there should be a swivel, but they are... Yeah, they are, it is fixed. So if you get this figure, do not try and move it. So he can stand up, yeah, you know, straight up. But if you want to, he can also stand straight as well if you get him balanced. Yeah, there we go. If you get him balanced, he can go straight out as well, like he's about to charge at Kong. But I think the idea with this figure is you have him facing upwards, because he he roaring like that. Now, for the battle damage piece, like with Kong, it just slips on and covers this wound. I think I've got it on the right way. If it would like to cooperate and actually go in the wound. There we go. That is actually you know, a nice snug fit. And you, from a distance, you honestly can't tell that that's there. Same with Kong. You, you, know, you can't really tell that it's there. Which is the whole idea. So yeah. That is really nice. For his fighter jet. It is... Beaten up. I'm just going to move Godzilla out of the background because my phone's struggling to focus. This fighter jet has seen better days. So if you look underneath it, it's all bent and buckled. It's missing the the very front of the cab. It's missing its nose. And the whole back end of it is bent. So yeah, this, this plane has been thrown around. The Osprey that you get with Kong is you know, nice and normal. Whereas this one is definitely beaten up. It's also been uh, painted silver. So shiny silver. So this, for some reason, has very little detail and zero paint. It's just moulded in the white plastic. Whereas this has quite a lot of detail on it and has been painted silver. A nice shiny silver. So bonus points for Godzilla for having a detailed and painted accessory. Now, Kong can hold the weapons, then can hold the vehicles as weapons. Can Godzilla do the same? I know Godzilla wouldn't really throw um, vehicles around, he'd just use his tail or his claws. But if he wanted to, could he? Yeah, you know what? Yeah. He doesn't have as strong a grip on it as Kong, so if you do. Oh, okay, maybe he does. 
It, it doesn't want to let go of that. So yes, Godzilla can in fact hold the plane to throw it at Kong. So I might have that arm down like he's just grabbed it out of the sky and now he's roaring. He's roaring in triumph because he's managed to catch a plane. And like us with trying to catch flies and birds as they fly past, he's been trying for a long time. So yeah. I am very happy with both of these figures. So let me bring Kong back in. As you can see, they do scale nicely with each other. So yeah. Move the scissors. That is all I can really say about them. They are really nice figures. Uh, these are £11 at retail, so if you find them, or if you find them for cheaper, definitely grab them. Um, so, yeah. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I shall see you all in the next video, whatever that'll be. Bye!